Welcome to EPG Partshala. Myself, Professor Mini Shet from Department of Foods and Nutrition, Faculty of Family and Community Sciences, the MS University of Baroda. The topic of today's presentation is adolescent pregnancy and its complications. About 16 million adolescent girls between 15 and 19 years of age give birth each year. Babies born to adolescent mothers account for roughly 11% of all births worldwide with 95% occurring in the developing countries. Some of these young women, pregnancy and childbirth are planned and wanted, but for many others they are not. There are several factors that contribute to unplanned and unwanted pregnancies in adolescents. Adolescents may be under pressure to marry and bear children early. Several factors that contribute to unplanned and unwanted pregnancies in adolescents. Adolescents may be under pressure to marry and bear children early. They may have limited educational and employment prospects. Some of them do not know how to avoid a pregnancy while others are unable to obtain condoms and contraceptives to do so. Adolescents may be unable to refuse unwanted sex or to resist coerced sex. Those that do become pregnant are less likely than adults to be able to obtain legal and safe abortions to terminate their pregnancies. They are also less likely than adults to obtain skilled prenatal childbirth and postnatal care. Therefore, the objectives of this module include that to understand clearly the key determinants and consequences of adolescent pregnancy. Secondly, to learn about the various recommendations made by the World Health Organization to reduce the rates of adolescent pregnancies and lastly to identify the scope of research in relation to adolescent pregnancies. Childbirth at early age is associated with greater health risks for the mother. In low and middle income countries, complications of pregnancy and childbirth are the leading cause of death in young women aged 15 to 19 years. Unwanted pregnancies may end in abortions which are often unsafe in this age group. There are an estimated 3 million unsafe abortions among 15 to 19 year olds in 2008. The adverse effect of adolescent childbearing also extend to the health of the infants. Perinatal deaths are 50% higher among babies born to mothers under 20 years of age than among those to mothers aged 20 to 29 years. Babies of adolescent mothers are also more likely to be have low birth weight with the risk of associated long term effects. There is a growing recognition that adolescent pregnancy contributes to maternal mortality, to perinatal and infant mortality and to the vicious cycle of ill health and poverty. The global strategy for women's and children's health launched by the UN Secretary General in September 2010 stresses the importance of addressing the health and welfare of adolescent girls, especially towards achieving the MDG 5 related to maternal mortality reduction. Adolescent maternal mortality and morbidity represent a substantial public health problem at the global level. Adolescents who are 15 to 19 years of age are twice as likely to die during pregnancy or childbirth compared to women over 20 years of age. Adolescents under 15 years of age are five times more likely to die during pregnancy or childbirth. An estimated 2 to 4 million adolescents in developing countries undergo unsafe abortions each year. Additionally, adolescent mothers are more likely to have 
low birth weight babies who are at risk of malnutrition and poor development. Infant and child mortality is also highest amongst children born to adolescent mothers. Adolescents are a critical target population with regards to influencing global public health outcomes. Young people below 25 years of age represent among 50% of the world's population and furthermore nearly 85% of the world adolescent population lives in developing countries. In a number of countries in sub-Saharan Africa, population below 15 years of age is 5 times greater than the population over 55 years of age and this subset of world population is often disproportionately affected by social and economical inequalities that characterize the development landscape. This makes them more vulnerable to poor health outcomes, especially the outcomes related to sexual and reproductive health. The key determinants of adolescent pregnancy include early marriage, sexual coercion and lack of access to the use of contraception. Consequences of early pregnancy can include morbidity and mortality attributable to low access to skilled antenatal childbirth and postnatal care as well. Structural inequities and social environment place certain groups of adolescents at risk of engaging in behaviors that jeopardize healthy transition to adulthood. For example, poor adolescents are less likely to complete their schooling. Consequently, they often have less access to health information since sexual and reproductive health education to the extent that it takes place is often provided to students in higher grades. Over the past 15 years, fertility rates amongst the poorest adolescents in many countries has increased and adolescent girls from the poorest fifth of the population are four times more likely to become pregnant than those in the richest fifth. Adolescent represents a key stage in development and critical opportunities for ensuring successful transition to adulthood. Poor sexual and reproductive health outcomes are, can often be traced to adolescents when most people become sexually active. Educational achievements and life skills and decision making around sexual behavior and childbearing have profound effects on the lives of adolescents as well as their families, communities and society in general. Determinants and consequences of early pregnancy. Key determinants of adolescent and early pregnancy include early marriage, sexual coercion, lack of access to and use of contraception. Consequences of early pregnancy can include morbidity and mortality attributable to low access to skilled antenatal childbirth and postnatal care as well and unsafe abortions. Structural inequities and social environmental place certain groups of adolescents at risk of engaging in behaviors that jeopardize healthy transition to adulthood. For example, poor adolescents are less likely to complete their schooling. Consequently, they often have less access to health information since sexual and reproductive health education is often provided to students in the higher grades. Over the past 15 years, fertility rate among the poorest adolescents in many countries has increased. Educational achievement, life skills and decision making around sexual behavior and childbearing have profound effects on lives of adolescents as well as their families, communities and society. Therefore, the need of the hour is adolescent pregnancy contributes to maternal, perinatal and infant mortality and to the vicious cycle of poverty and ill health. Reducing adolescent pregnancy 
is vital for achieving the Millennium Development Goals that relate to childhood and maternal mortality and also to the overall goal of poverty reduction. The national reproductive health policies of a growing number of countries have identified tackling adolescent pregnancy as a priority. However, the approaches adopted are in many cases not as comprehensive as they should be and often not based on sound evidence. The WHO guidelines on the prevention of early pregnancy and poor reproductive outcomes amongst the adolescents in developed countries provide recommendations on action and research for number one preventing early pregnancies by preventing marriage before 18 years of age by increasing knowledge and understanding of the importance of pregnancy prevention thirdly by increasing the use of contraception and by preventing coerced sex preventing poor reproductive outcomes by reducing unsafe abortions and by increasing the use of skilled antenatal childbirth and postnatal care. Recommendations are also given for action based on WHO guidelines on preventing early pregnancy and poor reproductive outcomes amongst adolescents in developing countries. The recommendations have been made for the six steps to be taken to reduce adolescent pregnancies and associated problems in the following sections. Number one, reduce marriage before the age of 18 years, encourage political leaders, planners and community leaders to formulate and enforce laws and policies to prohibit marriage of the girls before 18 years of age. Thirdly, undertake the interventions to delay marriage of girls until 18 years of age by influencing the families and the community norms and these interventions should be undertaken in conjunction with interventions directed at political leaders, planners and implement interventions to inform the empowered and empower the girls in combination with interventions to influence family and community norms to delay the age of marriage among girls under the age of 18 years. Also increase educational opportunities for girls through formal and non-formal channels to delay marriage until 18 years of age. Reduce pregnancy before the age of 20 years advocate for adolescent pregnancy prevention amongst all stakeholders through interventions such as information provision, sexuality and health education, life skills building, contraceptive counseling and service provision and the creation of supportive environments. Now how to maintain and improve efforts to retain girls in schools both in primary and secondary levels? We, one can offer interventions that combine curriculum based sexuality education with contraceptive promotion to adolescents in order to reduce pregnancy rates. Also one can offer and promote postpartum and post abortion contraception to adolescents through multiple home visits and or clinics to reduce the chances of second pregnancy amongst the adolescent. Thirdly, one can also increase the use of contraception by adolescents at risk of unintended pregnancy also to undertake efforts with political leaders and planners to formulate laws and policies to increase adolescent access to contraceptive information and services including emergency contraceptives. Undertake interventions to influence community members to support access to contraceptives for adolescents. To implement interventions to improve health services and deliver to adolescent as means of facilitating their access to and use of contraceptive information and services. Also 
it is important to implement interventions at, at scale that provide accurate information and education about contraceptives. In particular, the curriculum based sexuality education to increase contraceptive use among adolescents. Now, let us look at the conditional recommendations and implement interventions to reduce the financial cost of contraceptives to adolescent. Reduce quest sex amongst adolescents, continue efforts to political leaders, planners and community to formulate laws and policies that punish perpetrators of quest sex involving adolescent girls to enforce these laws and policies in the way that empower, empowers the victims and their families and to monitor their enforcement. Also, one can implement the interventions to enhance adolescent girls' abilities to resist coerced sex and obtain support if they experience coerced sex by building their self-esteem, developing their life skills in areas such as communication and negotiations and improving their links to social networks and ability to obtain social support. All the above interventions should be combined with interventions to create supportive social norms that do not condone coerced sex, implement interventions to engage men and boys to critically assess gender norms and normative behaviors. For example, gender transformative approaches that relate to sexual coercion and violence. Combine these with wider interventions to provide social norms on these issues. One should also try to reduce unsafe abortions amongst adolescents and ensure that laws and policies enable adolescents to obtain safe abortion services by informing them and their stakeholders about the dangers of unsafe methods of interrupting pregnancy, the safe abortion services that are legally available and where and under what circumstances these services can be obtained legally. Also, it should be uh, effort should be made to identify and overcome barriers to the provision of the safe abortion services to adolescents. Also, ensure access to post abortion by adolescents care as a life saving medical intervention whether or not the abortion or attempted abortion was legal. One should also ensure that the adolescents who have had abortions can obtain post abortion contraceptive information and services whether or not the abortion was legal. One should also try to see that there is increased use of skilled antenatal childbirth and postnatal care amongst adolescents. It is important to provide information to all pregnant adolescents and other stakeholders about the importance of utilizing skilled antenatal care and to provide information to all pregnant adolescents and other stakeholders about the importance of utilizing skilled childbirth care. It is very important to promote birth and emergency preparedness in antenatal care strategies for pregnant adolescents, whether it is in-house, community and health facility settings. Recommendations for further research include reduce marriage before the age of 18 years and also undertake research for identifying the effective interventions that result in the formulation, enforcement and monitoring of laws and policies including unintended harmful consequences. Also research can be undertaken to determine the feasibility and effectiveness and long term impact of economic incentive to adolescent girls and the families 
as a means of delaying the age of marriage until 18 years of age. Research can also be undertaken to determine the feasibility and scale up of interventions to inform and empower girls in combination with interventions to influence family community norms to delay the age of marriage among girls until 18 years of age. Some of the research can also focus to assess the impact of improved educational availability and school enrollment on age of marriage. Also, researches can be undertaken to assess the feasibility of intervention to improve the livelihoods of adolescent girls as well as their impact on delaying the age of marriage. Reducing pregnancy before the age of 20 years and undertake research to determine the effectiveness of interventions amongst adolescents and other stakeholders to reduce the chance of pregnancy among girls under 20 years of age and this research should address varying sociological and con cultural context, explore the effect of socio-economic improvements brought about by employment and school retention. For example, on adolescent pregnancy and its mediating determinants within the family settings. Some research can also be undertaken to determine the effect of availability of formal and non-formal education on adolescent pregnancy prevention. This research should consider potential mediating factors such as socioeconomic and marital status, determine the effect of targeted interventions for re education retention, for example, conditional or unconditional cash transfer interventions and policies, including support for education of the mothers on delaying pregnancy and reducing chances of second pregnancies. Research can also be undertaken to design and assess the feasibility and effectiveness of social support and intervention to reduce repeat pregnancies amongst adolescents. Increase the use of contraception by adolescent at risk of unintended pregnancy. Research can also be undertaken to identify feasible and effective interventions that result in the formulation of such laws and policies and identify and evaluate interventions that influence community members, support for access to contraceptive for adolescents. Also, one can undertake research to identify feasible and effective interventions to improve the availability of over-the-counter hormonal contraceptives to adolescent. Also, some research can be undertaken to determine the effectiveness of intervention and provide accurate information and education about contraceptives in various settings and populations, both in school and out of school children. Identify feasible and effective interventions that aim to involve adolescent and adult males in decisions about contraceptive use by partners as well as themselves, including interventions that aim to transform gender norms. Research should be undertaken to determine the feasibility and sustainability and impact of specifically reducing the financial cost of contraceptives to adolescents. It is very important to reduce poor sex among adolescents and therefore and research can be undertaken to assess how laws and policies to prevent coerced sex amongst adolescent girls have been formulated and enforced and monitored. One can also undertake research to determine the effectiveness of these laws and policies in preventing coerced sex amongst the adolescents. Now, let us see how to reduce unsafe abortions amongst adolescents and one can undertake research to assess the enforcement and impact of laws and policies that en enable safe abortions, services for adolescents where they exist and determine the feasibility and effectiveness of intervention to reduce 
barriers to the provision of safe legal abortion services to adolescents. There is a need to investigate the feasibility and effectiveness of intervention to reduce and ensure access to post abortion care by adolescents. Now let us try to understand about the use of skilled antenatal childbirth and postnatal care among adolescents and undertake research to identify interventions that improve access to and use of services by informing adolescents and other stakeholders about the importance of skilled antenatal and childbirth care for pregnant adolescents. In order to understand the gaps, we need to identify the types of changes to health service that can improve adolescent access to and use of skilled antenatal care. There is a need to identify effective intervention to improve birth and emergency preparedness for adolescents. This research should examine both proximal outcomes such as improved use of care as well as distal outcomes such as maternal mortality and morbidity. Also researches should be undertaken to identify the types of changes that need to be made to health services in order to improve adolescent access and use of skilled childbirth care. Research can be undertaken to identify effective interventions to reduce barriers to access and use of skilled care or adolescents during antenatal childbirth and postnatal periods. Identify effective interventions for tailoring antenatal childbirth and postnatal services to adolescents. One should also try to identify interventions to expand the availability and access to BEMOC and the CEMOC for adolescents. Hence, to summarize through this model, we have been able to understand clearly the key determinants and consequences of adolescent pregnancy, learn about the various recommendations that are made by WHO to reduce the rates of adolescent pregnancies and identify the scope of research in relation to adolescent pregnancy. Thank you.